for storytellers. Using multimedia. And of course, you know that by story, I'm not necessarily talking about once upon a time, blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about getting a, a message across. But I do like the term storyteller. I've really heard other people use it in, in a variety of different contexts. Because really, that's what we're doing. We're trying to communicate something. All right? Let's not put the cart before the horse. Right? The technology is great. But when I look at other classes that are similar to this, I see a very strong focus on technology. And in my opinion, not enough focus on the storytelling aspect. Right? All the technology in the world doesn't help you if you have nothing to say. All right? Um, therefore, the focus in this class will be both on the storytelling aspect and the technical aspect of it. It's kind of like a triangle, right? Or kind of like one of them stools that has three legs. You know what I mean, anyway. If those three, stool, uh, those three legs are even, that stool isn't going to tip, right? It's going to be solid. It's going to rest solidly on the ground. If, however, one leg is off, then it's not going to stand up. It's going to topple. Well, what are our three legs in this class? What are our three legs relating to multimedia story? first and then we'll go into detail about each of them. All right? But deciding on what story to tell. The second leg is deciding the best way to tell the story. And then the last way is using technical skills to tell the story, implement the plan.
has had a strong educational background, has experience, and has these sort of views. All right? That's a more complete story. You know, buy my product. That's not much of a story either. All right? Buy my product because people prefer my product to other products based on some survey I took, all right, or I, I gave. Um, my product is less expensive than the competitors, but every bit is good. My product might be a little more expensive, but is better than the competitor's product. All these things are the more detailed story. So one of the things, the first thing you need to do is you need to decide on the story that you want to tell using this multimedia, and then you need to refine it. It's not enough just to say a very simple statement. You really have to think what it is you want to portray. And it's funny because you see this all the time in advertising, you know, um, the infamous uh, Axe body wash commercials, right? Use my product and you'll be chased down the street by, by adoring legions of women, all right? That's a story they're trying to tell. Now, is it a true story? No, all right? Um, in this class, the focus is going to be telling our story in an ethical way, all right, and presenting things that aren't slanted. But when you see, for example, an advertisement for a uh, luxury automobile, you know, everything is done up to, 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 to show, to tell a story of class and, 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 and you know, really, uh, you know, extravagant living and so on and so forth, all right? When they show uh, an ad for a pickup truck, they're telling the story of, hey, this is a rough and tumble truck. You can haul logs. You can do this. You know, even if you never use it for doing any of that stuff, it's presenting that image. It's telling that story. All right? So we want to think of the story. We want to make sure we know the story that we're going to tell. All right? And we want to know beyond the superficial level of, this is what I want to do. I want students to come to Lorain Community College. That's true. But the story I might tell would be something along the lines of, um, I want students to come to Lorain Community College because education is shown to assist people in their career development. All right? Compared to other options, Lorain Community College is less expensive than other options. Um, some of our, uh, you still get a quality education now. Some of our graduates have done great things. Uh, and you have the opportunity maybe to start your bachelor's degree by getting an associate's degree here at our community, that, uh, at Loring Community, and finishing up as part of the university partnership. So that might be the story I want to tell, all right? So for any of these multimedia projects, first thing to do is decide what story you want to tell. Now. Here is where multimedia design and web design or graphic design it goes by a number of different terms, I suppose, depending on specifically what you're talking about, is different than being an artist, all right? It's different than being an artist. Some of the things might be similar, but some of the things are different. How do you think being a multimedia designer is different than being an artist? Really, just in the tools that you use. Really? How so? Well, I mean, in, well, I guess artists can do it that way too. But I guess the, the designer. Uh, uh, much. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't think it would be in the tools that they use. I mean, um, a, a a filmmaker making a short film and someone making a promotional video for Oregon Community College might use the same video camera, the same video editing software same microphones, same tools to export up on the web. Yet one, you would call the work of art, where one is a piece of, I don't want to say graphic design, but multimedia design. Think of the story. What's the difference between the story that artists tell and the story that a graphic designer tells?
graphic design, typically there is a very specific message. Um, and um, usually you want people to take some sort of action, right? Vote for my candidate, attend my school, buy my product, donate to this charity, volunteer for this charity. That's a specific action. That's a result. You go to see the movie Inception, for example. Does the artist want you to do anything? No. They're just presenting a work. Yes? I mean, I do both huh? things. And I think art is more of a personal expression, whereas design is for a customer. Ah, very good. Personal expression versus message from someplace external. All right? To summarize this, I guess I would say that the big difference in my mind is where this story comes from, all right? If it's a story that you can pop in your own mind, gee, I want to make a movie about this girl who falls asleep and a tornado comes and drops her house on a witch and, you know, that's art. Right? That's a personal expression. The, the person that created that story, created that film, had some ideas in mind of what they wanted to express, but it was their ideas, it was their vision. You know, the person who originally wrote the books, the person that made the movie, it's their vision. It's a personal expression, personal vision. Compare that with, say, a promotional video for Lorain County Community College. Well, someone went up to another entity, Maybe a consulting company, maybe an outside company, maybe people within the organization, and said, this is what you're going to do, all right? You're going to make a three-minute promotional video promoting our new mobile software development program, all right? In that case, the story isn't a personal expression of the artist. The artist didn't wake up one morning and say, I'm inspired to do a video about this new program. No, that message came from somewhere else, all right? And therefore, you have someone you have to please, <laughs> right? An artist can paint, draw, sketch, record music, uh, make a film of anything they want to, right? You know, they talk about the true artist that, that creates just for the sake of creating, right? That's not the case with a multimedia designer. A multimedia designer is aiming to please someone by getting certain results and by helping them achieve their aims, all right? Now, within the context of this class, again, we're talking about the typical sort of messages that a business or organization would want to convey, you know? Our organization is good, so you should buy from us, all right? Our school is good, so you should attend it. This is a good program if you're looking for employment here at our school. My candidate is the best candidate for Lorain County, and so on. All right, so we're looking at those sort of messages rather than artistic expression. So some of the techniques might be the same. If you're learning how to edit video, you do that the same way whether you're creating a film or you're creating a piece of multimedia for someone else's purpose. All right, some of the stages might be the same. Some of the concepts might be the same. We might talk about balance and white space on a page and all that. Some of the same terminology even that's used in drawing and art. All right? But really what distinguishes the two is where that story is coming from. Is the story coming from inside of, you know, an individual and they're expressing their vision? Or is the story coming from someone else, from the outside, and asking them to, to uh, express it for them? All right? Um, I, ha I have heard people in this class say that I don't know if I'll do well in this class because I'm not artistic, all right? If any of you are thinking that, know that that's not really an issue. The point of this class isn't for you to become a world-class filmmaker or a world-class animator or a world-class recording engineer. The purpose of this class is to teach you enough tools so that you're confident to express the sort of messages that you'd express in a standard business context, all right? So to be sure, if you have a sense of art about you, if you've done some art, if you've done some drawing, if you've done some photography or whatever, that'll help you. But it by no 
show me is what I call that a requirement for this class. All right? Um, because your, your, your job isn't to dazzle. Your job is to communicate. And oftentimes, communication can be done the, the most simply, you know, in some very simple, uh, very simple ways. All right. Questions about this? The next thing, then, is to decide the best way to tell the story. All right? So you have your story, and you try to be specific about it. Again, not just vote for my candidate. Vote for my candidate because point one, point two, point three. Not just attend Lorraine Community College, attend LC because point one, point two, point three. Deciding the best way to tell a story. What are some of the different ways we could tell a story? Let's, let's say we're promoting the mobile software development program, a new program that's going to launch um, this coming fall. What are some ways, if, we, if our job was to, to brainstorm and to come up with a web page, what are some ways that we could achieve that goal, tell that story? Just uh, how the mobile community is up and growing, and how okay. it's just by uh, using what's going on in the business world. And okay. you can just use it by, you can walk around and everyone's got their phones. Okay. So, let me try to summarize that. And I'll summarize that into two areas. Number one, the medium, and number two, the message. The medium I'm assuming that you're talking about is just plain text, right? You'd, you'd have several paragraphs, maybe with some links to other sites or whatever. But the medium would just be text. And the message would be, um, you know, mobile devices and apps are everywhere. Is there another way we could tell that story other than through text? We could do it by text, and it might be a very effective way of doing it. I'm not making judgments at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of brainstorming. What's another way we could tell that identical message? That mobile devices are everywhere. Yes? Um, video clips and photographs of people. <laughs> exactly. Go down to the college center, <laughs> take a video of a student or myself walking into a poll because they're checking their email or <laughs> playing Angry Birds or whatever, texting someone. So we could show a video, same message, a video of people using their device. People using their devices. We could try to make it humorous if we wanted to, you know, by showing people falling down the steps and that sort of thing. Not that people falling down the steps is funny. It's funny if it's staged and they don't get hurt. So, you know, don't, don't leave class today and say, I, I think it's funny when people fall down. No, it's not. But you know what I'm saying. One key thing, just as a side comment, you have to be real careful with humor is to make sure you're not misunderstood. All right? Otherwise, you get people thinking that, you know, you're having a laugh at someone that, that tripped. So that would be a second way to do it. And you actually mentioned, too, a, a second way besides video. You could also show photos of people doing that. All right? And that, would that could tell the same message, all right, and just a different way. Anyone think of another way to do it? Maybe animation. An animation. What would your animation show? People using mobile devices. Okay. What else might the animation show? What, what else could we animate that would maybe show the same thing rather than showing people? Because I'm thinking, if I'm going to, if, if my goal, if I choose to tell the story by showing people that are using it, I would probably want to use an actual video instead of animations. All right? But what could I use an animation for? Maybe 
something along those lines. Anything else? Yes. You sound maybe testimonials. Okay. Either a video or audio testimonial. In other words, you could speak to someone that owns a mobile software development company. You could speak to me or Professor Norod, people that have been working on this program. You could speak to students, maybe they've had Norod's intro class, so that would be a, another way. Um, getting back to animation, though. There's some I have in mind, and of course you know you have to be a mind reader in this class, right? Know exactly what I'm thinking to get the right answer. Yes? Well, a lot of times animation is made when it's something that you really can't show that a human would do, or, That's true. or that it's um, not appropriate for a human to say, or because right, right. you can show more expression in an animation. Okay. All right. So I don't know exactly what That's that true. would be. But if you want to take something over the top, right, I mean, it would be cruel to actually drop an anvil on a coyote's head, right? Yet the Roadrunner cartoons, they do it every Saturday morning and people laugh at it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a case of it. I'm thinking of maybe if I showed an animated graph showing the usage of smartphones, how they've grown since, I don't know, when were, when were smartphones introduced? 2005? I don't know. Over the last five years, all right, something like that. Maybe an animated graph, because I'm thinking the graph would look like this. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, over the last few years, it's really skyrocketed and gone through the roof. So maybe I could use some sort of animation for that, or maybe I could just use a regular image for that. All right. The point is, is we have, we have one message that we want to convey. All right. And we found several different ways to tell that story. And we found several different ways to tell that story, both in terms of the specific content that we're going to have and the media. So at this point, you've decided what story you want to tell. Now you're sort of writing the script, right? You're saying the specific content that's going to help convey that story and you're deciding what media is the best to present it. All right. Um, what's another message that we might want to communicate to help achieve our aim of promoting our program? One message we might want to communicate is the, the, the increasing use of mobile devices. What might be another little message that would help tell our story? Scene, we could almost call it, that would help tell our story. Well, we kind of talked about one, a testimonial, right? We could speak to a faculty person that would talk about the program. We could speak to a student who's maybe taken some of the classes. We could speak to a person that owns a mobile software development company to talk about that, all right? We could speak to someone that has projections about jobs in this particular area, all right? You know. That's a different scene, sort of. That's a different little sub-message, but it all relates back to our story of promoting this program. All right? Now, the, the point is that, you know, we're not actually doing this, right? This isn't like, you know, we're, we're not actually going to go and do this. So we don't need to explore every single bit that we would want to tell in our story or every single media. But I think you can see how this sort of cascades down. You define the story that you want to tell in very specific terms. You then decide what content is going to help me tell that story. And when you talk about the content you're, de you're defining, you're talking about, number one, the message that you want to convey. I almost pointed wrong. All right. Number one, the message you want to convey. And then, number two, decide on the medium. All right. I think we've covered most of the... Um, mediums that, that are, are feasible on the web, right? Plain text, images, videos, animation, audio. Um, I don't really know if there's anything else that would be in there. We could throw in the notion of making some of these things interactive, like an interactive animation, but that's still in an animation. So that's pretty much
much our choice is, that, that range. All right? Then, last but not least, we got to be able to, well, they say, if you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. All right? We decided our story. We decided how we're going to tell our story. Then we have to go and actually do it. We have to have the technical skills to develop and design a video, let's say, um, and to shoot the video and to edit it and make it look professional and, and so on. Again, not feature film worthy necessarily, but professional and adequate for the purpose um, at hand. Right. Actually, I want to back up to this one for a second and talk about two things. First thing is, is once we even decide, let's say, let's say we want to take a video of people uh, using their mobile device. Our job isn't done, right? We might want to go in and, and plan what that video is going to be. Is it going to be a five minute video? Or can I get my message across in a one minute video? Can I get my best message across in a 30 second video? What am I going to be showing in that video? Am I going to be showing people walking around? Am I going to be showing shots of the screens? You know, what's sort of the storyboard for that video? So the planning even, again, goes beyond that of not just saying, gee, I want to make a video, but specifically then constructing and planning the video. Another thing happens during this activity, and that is filtering, right? We've put up here a bunch of different things we could do. Should we do all of them? Not necessarily. Right? Um, it, it, it's, it's important to know as much what to leave out as to what to put in. Right? Um, there's a famous designer, I forget who it was, um, I don't remember who said this quote, but they said something along the lines of, a design is complete, not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing more to take away. All right, so you take away uh, the stuff that's not needed, that's extraneous. Now, this kind of goes against the, the, the grain of, of, of most people, right? Editing and paring down. Most people want more, 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 right? You know, I want a VCR that allows me to watch VCR, jeez. Where am I coming from? <laughs> I want a DVR that allows me to record 56 different programs, even though I probably will never use that many features, right? I want, um, you know, I want a coffee maker that will allow me to you know, set it up as so it will go off, you know, exactly 15 minutes before I wake up and have a little fan to blow it in the direction of my bedroom <laughs> to help me wake up, right? Even though I might not ever use those features. You know, back in the days of the VCR, there was always a standard joke of going into someone's house and seeing the, the 12 o'clock blinking, right? Because everyone wants a VCR with a clock and a timer, but no one bothered to set it, all right? So our inclination as consumers is to say, you know, more is better. You know, if 